is normal, but is it right when you want to leave it there and not take care of it and get rid of it? No, that's not the normal thing. But I can't say I don't understand it because I definitely do. I got four of them still trying to get rid of. <laughs> Every time the school year rolls around, summer come rolling around, they in my kitchen. Yeah. School year rolls around, they back in my pocket. School supplies. Is school free and not the supplies, <laughs> not the uniforms. Y'all want them to go there anyway. Why is it on me? <laughs> Why do they need pencils? Cave me and didn't have pencils. And now you're talking about no, they don't need to write in cursive. What? But I got to write a signature. Maybe. You know what I mean? The kids come across me. I'm like, write your signature. What that mean? Oh Lord. Oh, Print your name. I got you on that one. <laughs> So the stress is, is, is understood. But you talk to a mother who has never had a child, she don't know what you're talking about. Like, oh, this sounds horrible. I just never want children then. That ain't gonna stop you from experiencing any other stresses everywhere else. The job stress everybody out, don't it? You be in there with your boss who don't even believe in God and be praying for him. You be trying to go from not to come from zero to 100 at all on somebody because you need your pay. Like, Lord, move about the way. But you got to deal with that at work. So that's starting with your everything that we do. Even when we, even when we speed to get somewhere, it's mental. When you got a red light and you rush it, it's mental. The red light been the same. <laughs> it's the same time frame all the time. But as soon as you act this red light, when you rush it, it seems like it's holding for the longer time. It's been that way. Oh, I can't believe it's just taking its own time. I can't believe You know what? I hate red lights. I hate red lights. Red lights can go away. As a matter of fact, I wish every light was green. And I'd be like, on both sides? You want to go both sides? You want no stop sides? No, no, nothing is to... When we get mad, our minds go everywhere but the right way. What you say? We can even murder some people in our heads. And you're going to call everybody else crazy but you. All y'all agree that y'all have been murdering people in y'all heads. We're going to call somebody else crazy. You done killed your husband a couple of times. And then when he sleep, mm -hmm. pillow to the face. Pillow to the face. Sugar in the tank. And the freeze in his cereal. Like you just come up with anything. You come up with all kinds of things when you're upset. Because your mind will run away from you. You don't take control of it. The Bible says a tongue is an unruly number. I was like, well, God, what about the mind? Then I realized he was already talking about the mind because in order to tame the tongue, mental strength had to be there anyway. It goes to G-O-D. I knew what he was talking about. I dissect the Bible just a little bit. So I want us to take, as much as we talk about the mental health of others, if anything in here that's been said, taps on you. Okay, I'm going to say this. Let me rephrase it. Something I have said today tapped on you. Because everybody got a brain. Everybody has a mind. The mind will make you believe in things. You will believe somebody love you that don't. You will believe you love somebody that you don't. You will stay a place you know you don't need to stay and convince yourself that it's better if you're there. You will convince yourself you need to stay in places to help other people be better, but it's dragging you down mentally. So the mind is affected by everybody. Everybody here done lost somebody. Death affects everybody. Everybody in here done had something and lost it. Everybody in here done had to spend some money. People spend money and be like, what's my account? You just spent six dollars. Why don't you already know? But I'm still cheap. <laughs> Text me. <laughs> <laughs> like, can I get a five for five? Oh God, I get a five? <laughs> like, how much I just spent? You spent five dollars. Why you didn't check it before you spent Why you didn't check the book? I be checking it before and after. I, I never realized my mama had a checkbook. I, I didn't understand. She's like, I gotta balance my checkbook. Girl, what that mean? I balanced my app. I balanced the checking account on my app by looking at the, the minuses and the plus for my check. <laughs> oh, y'all pray for me. I ain't been delivered for being silly yet. Probably will never be silly. I'll be silly at my funeral. Um, <coughs> yeah, I already got my outfit planned out. Don't worry about it. My outfit gonna say I'm dead. 
Like people don't walk up there and be like, this fool. <laughs> <laughs> just, they who I can't believe she done put in with a shirt that says she did. We know we did. We know. You gonna get a good laugh from my funeral though. I mean, I, I feel like it's appropriate. My mama and I already cursed me. So, <laughs> Damn. Damn. You tell them what you said? I ain't gonna tell them. I told my mom I was gonna put in a nurse at home. Oh, <laughs> she wait. said, hold on, wait a minute though. She said, I'm gonna outlive you. <laughs> She killed me. Um, <laughs> and I like to laugh because life is serious enough. It's, it's serious. It's serious. What I do, my job, uh, don't let me ever let me make it feel like I can make light of it. I handle it well because I've been doing it a long time. But it is a struggle. It's a struggle to see kids struggle. It's a struggle to see kids, parents struggle. It's a struggle to see anybody struggling from mental illness and feeling like they cannot conquer it. It is not easy to see, but I have lost patience. Um, I can count on both of my hands, because I have not lost more than 10. I can count the number of patients that I have lost, but I cannot count the number of lives I've saved. I actually had a patient from about five years ago. Um, the statute of limitation for talking to patients is five years. I tell my patients all the time, keep my number. I ain't gonna change it. And in five years, text me and let me know how you're doing. Had a patient text me today who was struggling with depression, wanted to kill himself, we got meds right, therapy's going good, going well, discharged, and he just texted me today, he was like, hey, yeah, I'm doing amazing. I have not been back to the hospital. I take my meds. Thank you for saving my life. I'd be like, that's why I do what I do. Because if it's one that gets to tell others, how do you think we find out about Christ? Christ told one person, then he trained disciples, and then sent those disciples out so they could talk to people. I'm just a disciple for mental health, saving as many lives as I can. Can I save them all? I cannot. The ones, I know their first names, I know their last names, and unfortunately, I know their date of birth and the day they died. I will never forget it. But it's the ones that I see that, that I got that's got the dash with no end date that I'm running for. I'm running for the ones I've lost. But boy, I'm kicking it with the ones that are still here. So, if something that was said today, I'm sorry, something was said today that touched you, then encourage other people to have a mental health conversation. If you're gonna ask your friends how they're doing, be invested in how they're doing. If they say I'm good, I'm okay, say hey, hey, let's try to use a feeling word. If they say what's a feeling word, Google it. <laughs> Send them a feeling wheel and say, pick one of the words off of here that really describe how you feel. If you don't know what that word means, Google it. Let's, let's research, let's learn some new words together. TikTok, teach them all day, demure. It's doing all of that. So, educate people on what feeling words are. When somebody asks you how you feel, be honest. If you're stressed out, say, I am stressed out. That's going to tell you if folk really for you too. You call them and you say, they say, hey, how you doing? You say, I'm just stressed out. And they say, who, girl, me too. I'm stressed out too. Like, all right, so do you mind if we sit down together and just like unload our stress and just have a time to be together? Oh, I don't got time to do that. I got time. Call me. I'm stressed out. I'm stressed out about my clothes ain't feeling like they used to. I don't went from an eight to a twenty. everybody to get up and say self affirmations in the morning. Create five. Five things that, I tell this to all my clients and y'all ain't my clients, but I'm going to tell you because it's good to hear. Five things that you don't believe about yourself that you know you should, get up and say them every day. 
So if you really don't think you're pretty, then you need to get up and say that. If you don't really think you're going to be successful, then you need to get up and say that. If you really are struggling with the fact that you don't know what you want to do in life, then you really need to get up and start telling yourself, we're going to figure it out. Today is the day we're going to figure it out. We're going to Google it. We know, I'm going to take care of me. I'm going to start off with me, and it's going to trickle down. It's going to be so good on me that it go down to everybody that's around me. I'm about to be a light. I'm about to be inspirational. I'm about to do this. What I'm about to do, I'm about to do this. My kids will tell you, every day I tell myself I'm a superhero. And my older kids understand it now because I've been saying it for a long time. But my seven-year-old, he's just now coming into hearing me say and understanding because, you know, he's a little different. Um, hearing me say I'm a superhero. And he's like, Mommy, you don't have a cape. He is different, Granny. I know that's your face. I know that. I'll be like, I do got a cape. You don't see it? I'm like, no, I don't see no cape. I do have a cape. You don't see it? You don't see my cape? You're like, I know, Mommy, I don't see your cape. I said, you gotta, you gonna learn to see my cape. So then I come home and I be like, Ah, get some people I saved today. Yeah, superhero. He's like, oh. You're not talking about Superman. You're talking about like, just, you know. Yeah, uh-huh, that's what I'm talking about. Spider-Man ain't got no cape, but he out here saving Mary Jane. Ah, I don't have to have a cape to save lives. What I do save lives. I'm a life saver. I'm a life changer. I mean, I'm bringing people to Christ on the way. Tell yeah, David I see that. <laughs> if you're going to be invested in people, make sure you do it. Get up and tell yourself every day you're going to save a life, even if it's just yours. Hey, uh, I, put, I put my blinker on, and <laughs> some people do behind me, and I can speed up, got over in the rain, save the life, stop the wreck. <laughs> I stopped at a red light today, and I didn't run it like I normally do, save the life, no wrecks. I went to work today, and because I went to work, I serviced six clients, <laughs> save the life, that's me. And they got to be big. I turned the lights on in the room today. Yeah, y'all thought y'all was in the dark, didn't it? Save the life. <laughs> Every Sunday, Miss Shereen's husband goes up there and makes sure everything's good in the church. He didn't already saved us. He saved us from being hot. I'm like, people at this library. <laughs> stop it. Stop, stop, stop. So I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> encourage yourself. His song says, encourage yourself in the Lord. Absolutely. Who did God say you were? Speak to yourself. If you don't believe you're fearfully and wonderfully made, well, I don't know what to tell you, because, baby, when I look at me, <laughs> wonderful is all I see. Be quiet, Granny. Don't be hating on me. I want you guys to pour into yourself so that you can be able to pour to other people. I'm a gallon sized jug, but when that jug gets empty, I need people pouring into me. I don't, and I don't need another gallon size pouring into me though. Listen to this. If Yolanda got a gallon and I'm a gallon and I'm empty and all she got is a gallon, if she poured everything by herself into me, I've taken everything she got. Now we got to, now I got to pour back into her my whole gallon. What I'm doing is, I'm, the only reason I'm gallon size is because I don't work enough on me to pour into all the people around me that may be pints. So if I pour into 700 pints, and all 700 of those pints are prepared to pour back into me. Then I got way more people I can give to and way more people I can get more from. Get around some people that are willing to spread themselves with you, pour themselves into you. You pour yourself into them, but never drain you dry. Stop getting around folk that's emptying you out. And I ain't even talking financially. I'm talking about mentally, emotionally, and spiritually because that'll attack anything before money will. You can be rich and honestly, rich for rich for kill yourself. Oh. It's like money can't solve problems. I'm like, I, I can tell. <laughs> they ain't got no bills and they still depressed. Because depression ain't got nothing to do with what's in your bank account. Now, what's in your bank account can make you sad, <laughs> can run you low, <laughs> can <laughs> make you cry. But just because I put more in there don't mean your spirit gonna be lifted. You just happy you can pay your bills. But just because you kicking it in your house with, with your bills paid by yourself don't mean you ain't lonely, depressed, sad, and want to tear everything and everybody else up. Make sure you're good. And other people around you are good too. 
So if it's five of us and one of us is down, it's four of us to get to that one, and that one ready, because now all of us are half empty. She all way full, she can fill us back up, but then we all working. We're all filling. If your friends call you with problems, and you can't call them with your problems, it's a leech. It's a mosquito. What you do with mosquitoes? Some of y'all need to get a glass water. So watch your friends. Go through them. Jesus had some dope disciples, but even one of them was trifling. I can't believe you sold without Jesus, bro. You really did that? Damn. And he was close to him. Jesus was like, it's about to say going to betray me. Who? No, I'm not. 15 cent. Does it come in 20s? I bump it to 100. I'm going to show you where it is. Let's go. Make sure you know who's around you. Pouring into you, you pour into them, and then you're able to pour into other people. Ask people, are they okay? When you see that they're not okay. And if they tell you they are okay, O and K are just two letters that are actually in the alphabet that people put together to make a word, but it's not one. O and K are two different alphabets. Actually, it doesn't, okay, that's just two letters. Even A-M stand for something. What does OK stand for? It is not an acronym. Tell me how you're feeling. When people ask you how you're feeling, be honest. Stop being afraid, because you never know who might be able to help you out of the place that you're in. Let somebody pull you up. You're drowning in two feet of water. I tell people, stand up. I can't stand up. Well, my hand is right here. All the reason I know it's two feet of water because I'm standing in it with you. Get up. Help me up. How much lower do you want me to go? I'd have been on my knees picking up folk though, so I can't even lie. Like, I'm in the water. It's cold down here. But I'll go down there to get you as long as you coming up. Now, I ain't going to go down there and you like, Danielle, lay down. We're going to drown. <laughs> you want me to lay down here with me? No. I'm down here to pick you up. What it say, the muck and the miry clay? I'm down here to pick you up so we can start molding ourselves. How good is your mental health? If it's not good, let's get it good. We start with those self-affirmations. We, the, we start there, and then I need you to start listing where your struggles are. Everybody should be journaling every day. You know they have those little cute biblical journals where we study the Bible. What about studying you? Do you even know who you are? I ain't talking about your name, birthday, social security number, what you look like. I know what I look like when, I, when I'm looking in the mirror, but when I'm not looking in the mirror, I have no idea what's on my face. Only you know to tell me. There's a book in my nose, I ain't going to know. Unless I be like, let me look, but I ain't walking around with a mirror like this every day to make sure I ain't got no boogers, because then I couldn't see where I was going. So, list your struggles. Journal every day. I tell people to journal so if you have a bad day, you know what it looks like. But if you have seven good days, you can go back and reflect on that bad day and figure out what you did those days ahead to be able to heal from the bad day. Journal. Self-affirmations. If you know that you are struggling with something and it needs to be diagnosed, go get diagnosed. The diagnosis ain't the devil. Your refusal to get help is. God gave preachers, teachers, and people for exhortation. God gave therapists too. He gave electricians. He gave people who know how to pave streets. He gave people who know how to make microphones. <laughs> Cameramen. He gave all of us different talents and aspects. So the Bible may only list those, but he's not telling you that's where he stopped it. He gave us so much more. So take the time to go get help. I'm a therapist. Would I see y'all? Absolutely not. No. Nope. Mm -mm. I know y'all crazy. I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I would. I'm just playing. Dang, y'all looking at your serious face like, yeah, you ain't, you ain't nothing. But I would. I would see people. I have an unbiased opinion, but I'm the hardest therapist there is because I make people work to get well. You cannot just come to me and talk and ain't got no action. You got homework. 
You got stuff you got to do. You gonna have to work. It's going to be blood, sweat, tears, tissue, paper stuck on your face. We are working to get well because I had to work to get well. And if you get meds, take them. If you're happy and you know it, it's your meds. They working. It wasn't working before because you wasn't taking them. So when you start taking them, don't be like, well, I feel better. I ain't going to do it. Okay. And when they say take these cancer meds or it's going to come back, you're going to take them, ain't you? I tell people, if you don't want those little demon men that you were seeing in your closet to come back, take your medicine. Because that's what you was afraid of. That's why you came here. So I ain't going to say, well, take your meds to feel better. You don't want to see the man that was sitting at the edge of your closet with the red them red eyes and their blonde hair they kept coming out grabbing your foot in the middle of the night waking you up take your meds keep it like yep <laughs> i'm gonna take them i thank you so here's my way of saying if you want to get better and you know meds will help you become better take them you'll take them for your physical health why not take them for your mental health i don't want nobody to say i'm crazy i don't care what people say because to me, in order to call somebody crazy, you have to recognize they was crazy because you crazy. How do we recognize other black people? <laughs> you go in a room and everybody eating and quiet, you know you don't walked in a room full of what? Black people. Y'all ever been in a place and seen something happen and you looking for the next nearest black person and y'all have the same exact facial expression? Like I know you. <laughs> you ain't even gotta know them. Y'all just make an eye contact. Black people have their own language. You know where they at, but you only know that they're black because of what they do. Same thing. I'm going to know you're well because of what you put down. Just like I know you're having a bad day because of what you're putting out. I know you like what I said because you not. I know you was confused on what I said because you hit the... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Sound like my CEO now yesterday. I told him the people that we have a geriatric department. I said, I'm so glad the nurses got it together. They was over there falling like crumbs. He died laughing. I said, why was this so funny? He said, because I had a crumb on my shirt and I flicked it off and it just fell. And I thought about those people just dropping. <laughs> geriatric perfect population was struggling over there. Them folks just, they just standing up and boom. I was like, oh, do I help them? <laughs> I don't know how to I pick them up. Sorry, Granny. Uh, don't you fall. It's going to be like dominoes, baby. I'm going to lay down with you. But seriously, take care of yourselves. Take care of the people that you love. Take care of the people you don't love. Because you should love everybody. Because I know regardless of who they are. Self affirmations. Get a journal. Get a therapist. You do not have to be mentally unstable to get a therapist. People who want to get married, because they want a discount on their marriage license, they go see a therapist or a pastor for the discount. But they leave with so much more than the money off. You go to a therapist, you're not going there because you, because <laughs> I'm going here because I need help. Sometimes you're going because you don't know what to do. We help people figure out their jobs. I had a lady that was a nurse, had been a nurse for 10 years, come to my office, Google crowd was like, I hate being a nurse. I said, why are you a nurse to you? She was like, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do in life, but you know you don't want to be a nurse. Let's start there. So you don't want to do anything in the medical field. Boom, medical field alleviated. What are we doing next? You want to be in the military? We just started naming stuff and going through stuff and finding out, you know what you people say, I don't know what I like. You know what you don't like? So what you want to eat? I don't know. Well, start off by telling me what you know you don't want. We can alleviate some stuff. Stop saying, mm hmm what y'all want to eat? I don't know what we want to eat. Y'all want Piccadilly? No. You, you, you said you didn't know. I done lost something for you to know. Now you're like, no. You said no to 700 places, women. <laughs> Just tell them I ain't what you want to eat. If you don't know, you're like, hold on, let me think about it. I know I want no McDonald's. I know I want no Taco Bell. I know I want no Wendy's. I ain't had Sonic in a while. You want some Sonic? Yeah, I'm going to go to Sunday. Cool, we can go to Sunday. You see how much easier that was? Y'all letting that man go through 700 places knowing y'all would never want to go none of them if he ever asked on any day of the week. That's why I'm still single. All right, so... Uh, take care of yourselves. 
Mental illness is important. Your mental health is important. What three areas of your life does it affect? Social. Social. Emotional. Emotional. Psychological. Psychological. Everything you do affects your mind. Watch what you watch on TV. Watch what you listen to. Your ear gates, your eye gates are the gateways into your mind. It'll help you be there. Because I can start singing a Prince song right now, and I guarantee y'all. Y'all ain't heard it in a long time. But what is the signature noise that Prince will make? All right. Everybody know. See what I'm saying? What you have heard is stuck there. If I had to pull out a bike for y'all to ride, everybody in here could ride it except Isaiah. I met, a, I met a 4 year old man that couldn't ride a bike because his mama never taught him she was a terrible person. <laughs> Sorry, Shereen. <laughs> Does anybody have any direct questions you want to ask, anything you want to know about mental illness? Do you want to know where you can find a therapist? If you are concerned about payments for therapists, there is Open Path Therapy Collective where you can go literally have a therapy appointment for as low as $25 if you are concerned about money. If you are concerned about money, your job has an EAP because they are all authorized and have to have one. Go and get your six free sessions. You are without excuse. If you go to a church, your pastor should be free. If he charging you, come to New Hope, join, call David. <laughs> At that point, it's free. If you got friends, you know your friends are struggling with mental illness, tell them where to go. Tell them what to do. Let's save more lives than we are losing. You know how many people died today because of suicide? I get a number every single day. Well, most of us therapists do because we're nerds. We like to know how many people died. So far, the number in Tennessee is already over 120. And what time is it? 451. I have I have not checked since before I came in here because I just want to know the number. Suicide. For, for one day. For today. For one day. Think about how big Tennessee is. It's not rare. It's not odd. Is it? It's wild, man. We're losing. The only way we start winning is we do this right here. We start talking. We start being honest. We start being open. We start caring. We stop hiding. We stop lying. Acting like we good when everybody else in and somebody else in the room ain't good. It's okay. We stop talking about folk. Every woman that dresses provocatively isn't looking to seek attention. It's all she knows. She's not looking for attention. She's actually looking for connection. There's a difference between attention and connection. Attention is I want you to look at me. Connection is I need somebody to help me. Which one are you doing? Y'all know which one I'm doing. Just playing. Just playing. Just playing, Mom. She's going to get me later. Anybody have any questions, any comments, any concerns, anything you want to know? I am a wealth of knowledge, but once I put this microphone down, there's nothing else for it. I dang it, I just knew somebody was going to do that. I'm just playing. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I have a lot of questions about mental illness. I know. Like for one, uh, do you ever talk about coping skills and how people should cope? I can tell my story. Uh, I, 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 I love people and I want to help people, but I think uh, you have to want to help yourself. And just like you said, you just can't take everything from the person who's helping you. You got to be willing to work with the person who's wanting to love on you. For instance, I was hearing something, I was trying to take notes, but I got so far off. But uh, the only person who's going to holler is the person who get hit with the brick. If somebody throws a brick, the person that got hit with the brick is going to be the one to yell. And most of the times, it's that person's parents. Mm -hmm. Somebody who loved that person the most is going to take it all. And there is no, it's a lot of people do not want to support. They're good at talking and saying, like you said, how you doing? After that, it's like, bye-bye. I'll holler at you. You know, like Marvin Gaye say, it makes most parents want to holler. Throw up both of their hands. 
because there is no one there. We talk a good game. But there are people, I, I know about five of my friends who have sons who have a mental health disorder. There is nobody there to help them. They won't even call the person on the phone and say, let's have lunch together. You have to make people know that you care about them. And they don't have to be your children. I have a, lot, a little boy who was nine years old. I just connected with him. His mother took him away, and every day I wonder where he is and wonder, did he feel like I rejected him because I can't find him. So I'm just saying, uh, coping skills will be good. I have mirrors in my house. And I tell people there, those mirrors are there for a reason. And everybody needs to like themselves. Something about yourself that you need to just fall in love with. You really need to like yourself first and most of all. Because even though you may experience trauma throughout your life, and things are not perfect. This is not a perfect world. And there are no perfect parents. And sometimes, like you said, the parents are struggling this week. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a forgiveness in your heart for those people who have hurt you. You have to learn. And sometimes people don't want to know Jesus, but that's the first thing I need to tell you about. Because he's the one. He's the one that's going to help deliver you from anything. Because that's the only person who can promise you, I can help you be okay. So you got to want to know that man. Because without that man, you can do nothing. I can talk all day long. And I can want for you all day long. But he's better than medicine. And I know we talk about medicine, but I know I've seen God work. My mother had 14 children. And I used to bring children home from school early on in life. I know who I am. Because when I was 14, my mother passed away. Wow. And I tell people this not to brag, but I didn't get on drugs. Mm -hmm. I was never molested. I uh, never you know, raped or alcohol or none of that. And I think that I knew then that somebody took care of me. There were angels camped around me. And that's the reason I can say I love you. And that's the reason I can cut your grass in the hot sun when you don't want to cut it. Because it's a, it's, a it's a lot of mental illness mm -hmm. caused me to start businesses because people couldn't clean up their house. You got to clean up to clean up. Mm -hmm. See, it's a lot of things you see people with hoarders. That's a mental health disorder. Mm -hmm. When somebody see a hoarder's house, the first thing they want to do is walk out. Mm -hmm. Walk out. You have to love people enough, like you said, to do something. That's why I love commercials. I love Nike when he said, just do it. <laughs> we can put on white, but we got to show that we want to be right. right. And we got to step beyond the walls of our churches and be about our father's business. I got a lot of notes down here. I can tell you about a lot of stuff. I can. But I know I don't have the time. But God is good. Stir up your gifts. Amen. Get ready. Let's go. Let's move <laughs> on it. Yes. Let's not have these meetings and have excuses. Let's find solutions to our problems. There is work to be done. And I know people run away from work. Because I've been in the community. And I've done it. And I had to go along them many times. And I still go along. But let's get busy about our father's business. And let's quit playing. Because mental illness is real. And people are dying. And we are losing people. And it's a sad thing when we dress up and come to church. But when we walk out, we don't. I'm not saying all. A lot of times, we don't really care about that other person. Because if we care, you know what I know? You will do something. We are not unemployed when it comes to God. Everybody's got a job to do. So I say, Federal Express, say absolutely positively. Let's do it. <laughs> COVID skills. A lot of people don't know about COVID skills. Self-affirmations is a form of coping skill because it improves your ability to look in the mirror and see yourself. When you are doing those affirmations, you got to do them in the mirror, you got to do it out loud. Right. The reason why you're doing it in the mirror, the reason why you're doing it out loud is because one, you are focusing on you. Two, how do you memorize songs? <laughs> music is loud. I love music. It's out there. It's, it's, it's here. It comes in your ears. You have enough stuff in your head to be looking at yourself in the mirror and saying it in your head. You could 
said, I can't stand myself. I'm sick and tired of Danielle telling me to do this, and I hate it, so I'm not going to do it. That was your head. <clears throat> but you're like, say myself affirmations. But if you are looking at yourself in the mirror, you say, I am beautiful. I am strong. I'm going to save lives today. I'm capable of doing whatever I want to do. Can't nobody stop me from being absolutely amazing because I said so. Today's going to be a great day. Not because of what other people may do to me that may make me upset, but because I choose for it to be no matter what. And I heard myself say it. So if I hear myself say it over and 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 over again, what do you think happens to me? Somebody said, you ugly, who? <laughs> who ugly? Shoot, you, you must not know. I look myself in the mirror every day and this is what I say. You stupid, who stupid? <laughs> you must not know what I told myself this morning. I've been telling myself for the past 37 days consecutively. You ain't nothing. Who ain't nothing? Because I could have sworn I told myself this morning I was something. Actually, I told myself I was something. And here go six other things that I told myself in the mirror and I've been telling myself for like the past 46 days. And I, you know what? I believe them. I believe it because I confirmed it for myself. And then somebody was walking by and said, hey, you look wonderful. Oh my God, I said that this morning. <laughs> Thank you. But you had already said it, so they confirmed it. That's what happens when you tell yourself, I am dumb. And then somebody is telling you, I am dumb. You feel like they confirmed what you already believe, so it already drove you down. That's one of those coping skills. Journaling is a coping skill because I remember I started journaling. I have so many now. I started journaling back when I married that dude I was supposed to marry. You know, the one y'all said y'all wasn't going to marry that I did marry? Yep. Mm -hmm. I started journaling back then. So that was in 2012. And I remember the, I remember the day I went back and read my journal probably. I mean, I keep them because I feel like it's, it's a way for me to know how far I've come. I remember I wrote in my journal back in September 15th, 2012. I got married August 8th. And I remember writing, oh my God, I woke up and couldn't call my mama. I wrote that because I couldn't. We were in a bad place. I had turned my back on them. They didn't turn their back on me, but I turned my back on them. But I wrote it. And then I remembered today I could wake up and call my mama if I wanted to. From that day to this one, and you can't tell me nothing about when I got back with my folks. You can't, can't tell me away from them folks. You okay? can't. But that's because I know what it was like to not be there anymore. But it was a way to remind myself this is what life was like when you decided to do this. So that's not a good choice. And these were the days that was rough that came after that that made you know that that wasn't a good choice. And here you are right now, and you can look at all the other days that you had that you did not make a good choice. You know what you made this morning? A good choice. Right. <laughs> Check that 2012 journal. <laughs> the 2024 one is looking really good, baby. <laughs> Starting off good, been looking good. I mean, gain away, but been looking good. I'm gonna be the cutest honey bun you ever seen. You can call me a Swiss roll. Call me whatever. But call me little daddy. But you better put big on the back of it. Little daddy big. But it was that's a coping skill. I like to see where I have come from. What I used to do, I don't do anymore. So instead of telling people I was perfect, I can say, listen, in 2012, baby, you know what I'm saying? We had a time? Well, I had a time. It was not the time I want you to endure. So let me tell you about this time. <coughs> That's why I kick it with the youth. That's why I get to know all the songs they listen to and I learn the words and I be like, what that mean? No cap. Yeah, it means lie. I, I, I learned that. No cap, not capping. Can't tell no cap around here. And then YT means, didn't know that either. I'm learning this because when I go and talk to them, I'm like, Psh, no cap. All the kids be like, oh, <laughs> she said no cap. Like, yeah, I know I'm cool, right? I'm not. But I'm cool enough to y'all to now start listening to me. I buy Jordans 
And every Friday I wear a pair of Jordans. The kids be like, hey, y'all miss that? Yeah, them kids fresh. Where you get them from? I said, I got them from making good decisions. <laughs> you want some of these? You got to run through life making good decisions. I got this one because I took my meds this morning. <laughs> oh, yeah, you tripping. You tripping. I'm not tripping on bad decisions. <laughs> and my Nikes. But then they like resonate like, yeah, I'm going to give you some 90s like that. How you get them? Can't make bad decisions. Good decisions get you what you need to do. Good decisions help me make this money so I can buy these shoes. So when you get older, what you going to say? Got me some 90s because I made some good decisions. Connecting something that small to us would be like, uh, okay. But to the kids, they'd be like, I love Jordans. I love Nikes. I love nice shoes. I got to get nice shoes by making good decisions so I don't go to jail. So I don't go to hell. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make good decisions. Can we rob this bank? We're not robbing no bank. I can't get no Nikes. Because I'm going to be in jail. And they only wear those little slide ends in there. I don't want them shoes. They wear the socks with the grip on the bottom. <laughs> Middle health socks. It's a vacation, all right? Grippy sock vacation is what I call it. So she's absolutely right. Know what coping skills work for you. When you are upset, stop saying people pushing your buttons. You ain't got no buttons to push. That's a lie. You just got angry because you wanted to. And it was easy for you to do because you have no self-control. That hurt when the truth come out like that. You ain't got no self-control. I ain't got no self-control. What you mean I ain't got no self-control? Because you allowed yourself to go to 10. Remember? You just was at 10. That's no self-control. You don't have any self-control. But y'all put it in button form because it sounds it sounds less um, it sounds less directed and hurtful towards you. Because if you say it had a button, you're like, oh, they have buttons. We shouldn't press those. You tell me you got a button. I'm down your number on that joint, because clearly I have control over you. You're my puppet, I run you, you don't run me. You have no self-control, but I can control you. I don't have no buttons. I have triggers. I learned about my triggers. Once I learned about my triggers, triggers are trap doors in the brain. That's what I call them to the kids, so it make it make sense. If you don't know it's there and you fall into it, whatever comes after it is because you didn't know it was there. But if you know it's a trigger and you know somebody's leading you to it and you're like, here I go. That's a choice, lack of self-control. People trigger me all the time when they say, um, Danielle, you are so young to do what you do. Are you sure you know what you're talking about? <laughs> what you say? <laughs> what? Oh, I, yeah, I'm sure I know what I'm doing. Or they say, well, you've been talking about it. Do you have a license? I actually have seven letters. What you got? Well, I don't say what you got, Paul, but in my head, be like, what you got? Like, yes, I, uh, I, I do have a license. Then they're like, oh, oh, okay. Like, it is, did you need me for anything, though? You, you, you okay with my recommendation now that you know that I'm licensed? You good? Okay, thanks. But that's a trigger. Like, don't try me. You try me like I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, I ain't been in this field. Like, I don't do this work. Like, I ain't saying no people. Girl, you got me messed up. Let me take off my professional jacket and put on my uh, hood jacket and go from Westwood, come at the top of uh, Westwood and come down you like I'm from South Haven or something. Don't do me like that in front of people. But you know what I do? I just say, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. In my head, I done straight, like, DDT her a couple of times. Like, Straight kicked her on her shin. I know her right knee bad, so I know which direction to come from. I done pulled out the tracks that she got that I ain't got because she asked me the other day, was my hair real? You know, that kind of stuff. And But I know she's a trigger for me. But I don't avoid her. I go around her. Because one, it strengthens my wit. <laughs> I like my wit to be quick. So I like to be prepared for whatever she's going to say, make her feel a little low. I like to be the smarter person. So I approach her like, good morning. Oh, hi, Danielle. Hey, how are you? <laughs> how was your evening? Did you have a splendiferous evening? 
It's so good to see you. Well, I'm in the Chatham Adolescent Building if you need me. <laughs> but I'm going around her because it strengthens my ability to be around people who do not like me. They gag if they want to, baby. <laughs> I'm still in the front of the room. Standing next to you. They, everybody get a partner. You want, you want to be partners? <laughs> you want to be partners? She thinking she pushing me away. You want to be partners? I would love to be your partner. Let me show you how smart I am. Girl, let's win this medal real quick. How about for the team? Ow! Can't stand this woman, Jesus. We still won because I was a smarter person. That's not the point. The point is, I know what my triggers are. I'm working on my triggers so nobody can trigger me. Ain't no button to press. I got the remote, it's mine. You're not gonna make me angry. So doing your journaling, doing your self affirmations, going to see a therapist, learning what coping skills work for you. If listening to music calms you down, get near some music. You're like, I'm mad right now. Well, what calms you down? I don't know. Figure it out. You 50. <laughs> How you 50 and don't know what calms you down? Why are you acting out here acting 18? I got 10 year olds in my, in my facility that know they triggers better than you. Grow up. Figure out what make you mad. Get work on it so it don't make you mad. And then when the next thing comes, you know how to handle that. Grow up. Be in here mad because somebody talked about your outfit. You wanted to wear it because you liked it. Okay. I don't want to be around these people. Why are you here? Work on yourself. Like she said, do the work. Do the work. Know what your triggers are. Give with you some coping skills. Develop those coping skills. Use those coping skills. Help other people develop and use their coping skills. I got kids. I tell my kids, when you notice other people are getting upset, I need you to move. Because I don't know that they know how to control themselves. But I know you know how to move your feet. Oh, they acting the ignorant. Let's get on. No, I ain't going over there. We be stepping up like, oh, we finna get mad, what's gonna happen? <laughs> you ready to record? <laughs> pow, pow, pow! <laughs> they shoot, they shoot! We on Facebook Live, y'all, I'm out here in the streets and they shoot, and I'ma get the boom bullet. Dead in your face. <laughs> I have no idea how that happened. They was a good person. Clearly they needed to get to be on the scene. I be telling mine, move your feet. They finna start a fight, move your feet. Damn, my kid in middle school now, I don't know, y'all know. I'm saved, but I'm not that saved. What you say? My mama know, she done called me, told me somebody did something at the school, it was a teacher picking on my child. I was at work. She called me again, I was at the school. She had already left with the kids. I ain't need the kids to talk to the teacher. I came up there and was like, where she at? Oh, Miss Rogue, where she at? Because I need to talk to her about, because she told Aaron his mama shouldn't have named him that. So let, let her tell me I shouldn't have named him that. She, my kids are a trigger for me. I'm still working on it. So just don't use Andrew, Aaron, Adam, or Asa, and we're fair game. I know my limitations, but that's because I know myself. If people can get you to react, you don't know yourself. I ain't reacted at work in a long time. Because I don't need. I need. I'm, I'm not going to stop me from feeding them four at the crib. <laughs> not even her. You want to be partners? Now we, they had a partner assignment yesterday. She was like, oh, I got a partner. I'm like, that's fine. Because <laughs> she knew I was coming. Oh, she got a partner. It's cool. Next time, right? You know, I love being partners with you. <laughs> Get to know yourself. Pour into yourself. Work on yourself. Stop being a number in a room and be the person that's in the room who knows the numbers. Because if I can call your number, then I can get you to react. But if you call them the numbers, you call them the shots, you know what to do. Anybody else? Everybody good to go? I hope that you guys have enjoyed our talk today. Thank y'all for allowing me to stay with Mr. Jim. Thank you so much once again for allowing me to do what I love to do. Um, I love to be a comedian. Uh, <laughs> I'm a kid.
ain't no stranger to quit my day job. Nobody can tell you that. <laughs> But if you guys need anything, you have any questions, if, even if you would like for me to come and speak to wherever you are, youth groups, church groups, family groups, work groups, I have no problem with that. Please take my cell phone number down. Even if you just need somebody to listen to, it's only $5.99. Go over now, Cleo. All right, my number is... <laughs> Telemarketing. <laughs> I'm sorry. My number is 901 422 one two one one. Four two two one two one one. I had to say it a third time I gotta charge you. So I charge about that. If you have any questions about mental illness, you want if you are experiencing something, you've heard I've had people call me about their children and what they should do. I've had people have to take their kids to Lakeside because I told them what to do. You don't know what to do. I have no problem talking to people. Uh, like Red said, my office hours are. Dang, y'all ain't seen the movie? Nine to five. Nine to five. <laughs> Thank you, Sheree, for watching that movie. Thank y'all so much once again. Y'all have a great day. Um, again, my name is Danielle Rhodes, and I don't have one, not two, not three, but seven letters behind my name. Do not forget them because I worked hard for them. Thank you. That was fabulous day, y'all. Give her another hand, y'all. Wow. Woo. I thank God for you, and we will be getting you again. Oh, no. <laughs> so we need you. <laughs> and uh, one thing that um, I love that, um, I love all her points, but one thing that I love that Daniel was talking about was family and people you know. A lot of us, we do know people with mental illness. And like she said, back in the days, they used to just put them in a room, have them. But now, family just don't deal with them. You know, she prays, uh, something wrong with her. And it's like a, a thing that people don't want to deal with right now. But we need to deal with our family members and friends that we know that does have mental health. I'm not going to say that sometimes it's not challenging, you know, when you're dealing with someone with any kind of problem. But we need to think about it could be us you know that someone will have to help. So I thank God for that, and I just want to let people know, if you do have someone that you know, or any family members, or anybody with mental health issues, Danielle is a great counselor. I highly recommend her. So she gave her her cell phone number, so make sure you reach out and call her, because we will be calling her. Thank you so much, Danielle. And I want her mom to pray us out. Hey, oh, Dr. Rose. <laughs> Dr. Rose. <laughs> Dr. Rose. Amen. Thank you all so much for coming and listening to my daughter's little spiel. I am so proud of her. I am a proud mama. And I'm grateful for what God is, is doing in her. And, and her, I believe her calling is a ministry. It is a ministry, and we all as saints should be ministering to people in our, at our jobs, uh, at school, or whatever the case may be. So because uh, I do have this PhD, I am going to minister to women who have been incarcerated. I know that that's a passion that I have. That's what I did my dissertation on. And so I know that that's what God is most, wants me to do. So let's all, let's all stand tonight and, and, and today and get ready to go. Thank you. Y'all give Regina a hand because this is, this is her baby. And we're so grateful to be a part of it, uh, to be able to come and, and talk and, and learn. And it's so good to see how many first times we got here. Any first time was hey, man, hey, man, we we all we all gotta come back next next month. Uh, it's gonna be about the body, a healthy body. We've had a healthy spirit, a healthy mind, and a healthy body is gonna is gonna take place in September. So make sure you come back for that. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, we thank you for another opportunity, God, to learn, God, to to learn what to do. To not be afraid of what is real, God. To accept what is real, God, and get help if needed be. We thank you, God, for each and every home represented here, Lord God. And we ask that you take us to our every distant destination and we'll be safely there. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And as we go to church tomorrow morning, that some sinner man, boy, woman, or girl will come running. What must I do to be saved? Because we all need Jesus. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We do pray. Amen. Amen.
I really enjoyed today. I was enjoying Power Women for God's events. Today was really eye-opening, or shall I say mind-opening. I enjoyed Danielle and everything she has to say. It got me interested in the feelings wheel. I was Googling as she was talking and just interested in tapping into like more of mental health. So thank you again, and God bless you. Hi, my name is Janice Board Duncan. I really, really enjoyed the mental health um, session today. It really did help me, and I hope and pray that everyone will try to reach out to people in their families and try to just love on them and help them with their mental health because it is a struggle. Thank you. Hello, viewers. I really enjoyed myself. Uh, Danielle is a great psychologist I think she is but whatever she really taught us about self-care taking care of yourself and how to cope and deal with a lot of issues that people have as far as mental health and she just encouraged us to take care of ourselves and our mental health as, as well as our loved ones I really enjoyed it really went away with a lot today thank you I just want to take just a few seconds to talk about Danielle Rhodes Today was such a blessing. I mean, I, the, the way she spoke, it just made me think about so many things in my own life and in looking at the lives of, you know, family members and, and friends and realizing that, you know, the mental health, mental uh, illness, it's a big deal. It's a real thing. And it's something we need to be thinking about so much. So if you need to have a therapist, you need someone to talk to, Danielle Rhodes is the one you need to be contacting. Her information was absolutely amazing. And sometimes, you know, because it's such a, a heavy subject, people, uh, you know, sometimes they, they present it in a rather dull way. She does not do that at all. She's absolutely engaging, keeps you, you know, informed. She's awesome. So I am just so glad that I was able to be here today. Right, thank you. This was so awesome today. I truly enjoyed Counselor Danielle. She did a wonderful job. Oh my God, she did a wonderful job. And the things that she touched on, you know, the triggers and how we need to look out for this and how we need to give ourselves affirmations every day and tell ourselves we're beautiful or anything possible. Because a lot of times, self-love, you know, a lot of people don't have it. But she gives us ways that we can have more self-love to ourselves by just telling ourselves, you're beautiful, you're lovely, you're special. You know, we need to do that. And we need to also do that with our children. But she did a wonderful job, and I truly, truly enjoy her. And I am definitely going to have her back soon. Thank you.